Hello. Uh, today we will review the child support process surrounding the collection of DNA from fathers or alleged fathers, as well as custody issues. We will also discuss when and how a warrant can be issued. As you know, in, for many men, a warrant is usually issued when, for whatever reason, the mother is unsure who the father is. Let's get started. With the collection of DNA samples from men, there's a statute limitation for every state. Usually it's around the age of 18, but there are some states that will go as high as 19. Now, if you take a look at California, California has no statute of limitation. In addition to the collection of DNA, some states employ what is called a capias warrant, that is a C-A-P-I-A-S, warrant for your arrest for you to come in and take your DNA uh, because an alleged mother says you are the father or designated as the father. In several videos, I produced this, what I call a quick study guide. If you wanna understand how the child support process operates within the state, as you know, it's a federal program within the states, this is the section that covers their operations, 45 CFR part 303. There are about 108 of them. I just give you a quick study guide so you can understand the program. Hello, my name is Chris, and in this session, we will review the complicated process for the collection of DNA from alleged fathers and how it comes into conflict with your rights as well as how to defend yourself against this particular process. Let's get started. We produced a video called Mother Did Not Put You on the Program, which is a child support program, part one. We are still in the process of completing part two and what we're asking is please subscribe to our channel. Uh, please follow us on base, uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, when that is released. We have a section called a call to action where we review uh, information as well as how to defend yourself against this DNA process. So let's look at this process in two phases. The first phase is called the legal father. On this channel, we have said that every man is enrolled in the child support program. That's 45 CFR 264.30. However, if you are a 1099 worker, you do not belong in the child support program. Many states are attempting to implement or develop processes to include 1099 workers and independent contractors, but by federal law, which supersedes all state laws, 1099 workers are not included in the child support program. So if any of you out there that is having issues with child support and you're an independent contractor, please feel free to reach out to us. We have a video called Know Your Rights on this channel. This is where you learn how to defend your rights against the agency. So let's look at the DNA collection process. As you know, the paternity acknowledgement process is the first step in the collection of child support. And in 2018, 1.41 million men signed the acknowledgement paternity in the hospital. So to put it another way, if you have a child below the age of five, you may or may not have signed this form because it's included in the birth process. So you could be one of those men that are in the assigned a paternity acknowledgement process. Now, why is this is important? As a result of the pandemic, 30 million people have applied for the unemployment. If you are one of these men who signed the acknowledgement paternity, you may eventually be part of the child support process if the mother decides to seek services from the state. We have a, a video called the acknowledgement of paternity. If you've already seen it, uh, 
we suggest you watch it again if you haven't seen it. It gives you an eye opener of the knowledge of paternity process. Okay, so let's begin with paternity. Now, this is from the Texas Manual. As you know, the child support program in Texas is runs out of the Attorney General's office, which again is unconstitutional because by the definition of the program, it should be out of the Health and Human Services office. However, Texas decides to do it in this process. So paternity is determined, or legal fatherhood, if the parents are married. It is assumed that the man, the, the dad, is the legal fatherhood. However, if a child is born of unmarried parents, the law says that the biological father is not necessarily the legal father. So wait a minute. So what we're saying is in the hospital, if the couple are unmarried, the hospital will then provide them with the form called the acknowledgement of paternity, wherein as the biological father becomes the legal father. And this is the process for the collection of child support. So here's a quick quiz. How many legal definitions are there for fatherhood? Well, as you can see, there are relatively four definitions or legal definitions for fatherhood. So you may have thought that the biological father is the only uh, definition for fatherhood. That's not true on the legal terms. So first is what we call the presumed father. That is someone who's held themselves out as being the legal parent uh, of the child. And, and one of the key things that the, they must be with the mother 300 days before the birth of a child, almost a whole year. Next, we have what is called the alleged father. That is someone claimed to be the father of the child. However, paternity has not been established uh, whether or not the alleged father is the legal father. Next is the biological father. Obviously, the biological father uh, from DNA testing is the, is the father of the child. Yes, the dad. However, that is not the legal father. So the legal father is what the courts are focused on. So when a man goes to court and you're challenging DNA or you're accepting DNA or custody, which of these four status do you declare? Well, the only one the courts are interested in is the legal father. So that's reality check. This is a well-known case law. I quote this in every video. It's called Blessing versus Freestone. And where it states that the Title IV-D child support program was never intended to benefit the mother or the child or even the father. The purpose of the program is to assign it to the secretary of the states who then uses it to manage the relationship between the federal government and the state government that's blessing versus freestone now let's see how we apply versus versus freestone in the dna process so here's a case law it's called paternity proceedings you may not know or you do know that the purpose of a paternity proceeding is to determine who pays support payments. I'll repeat that again. The paternity proceedings purpose is to establish who pays child support. It is not to determine who the alleged father is. It's not there to determine who the DNA father is. And the case law is Commissioner of Public Welfare and Kohler, as well as Salvatore versus Anthony. Okay, so that is the purpose of a paternity hearing. So if you're called court to determine paternity proceedings, you should not be thinking DNA. You should be thinking that you are now on the possible road to be paying child support. So let's take a second scenario. When the mother signs over her rights in terms of getting benefits from the state, the welfare office or the secretary of state can bring the father into the child support hearing, again, for paternity proceedings. And here's the issue. When the mother signs over her rights, she's no longer part of the process. That is, the state now has the authority to bring a paternity action against you. 
In that case, it's called social services versus Bailey, right? So here's the third option. So if support is not the primary issue and you just want to find out whether or not the child is your DNA, then you can go directly to what is called judicial Supreme Court to determine the status of the child. So there are three, uh, three conditions. So let's think about that. So the purpose of paternity is to determine who pays child support, not necessarily the DNA of the child. So here is my opinion. This is all about the money. Child support has always been about the money. As Blessing versus Freestone says, it is about the money, the collection of support payments. Therefore, a short quiz, men, if you're called in to child support court for paternity, understand that you're going in to pay child support. Now, if the man or the alleged father decided he wanted to know that if this child's DNA uh, matches his, the best alternative, in our opinion, is to take it to judicial court. Why? Because in judicial court, support payment is not one of the criterias for DNA determination. Now, here's the catch. Many of the judges and lawyers will convince you the easiest route to go is child support. Well, as I point out, when you get there, there is a trap. And more than likely, you may end up losing the case. So mom did not put you on child support as a result of a paternity proceedings. The state did. We produced a video call, Mother Did Not Put You on the Program Part 1. Uh, we encourage you to watch that as well. So let's look at Part 2, which is called Genetic Warrant, right? Or to put it another way, let's look at warrants. Now, the case that manages warrants are called Maryland versus King. It's one of the best cases about a warrant that was decided on 2013. So a warrant, by definitions, definition, is an arrest with probable cause as well as an affidavit must be produced. And what that is, it says that in order to take a person or swab the inside of their cheek upon arrest for DNA, they treat it similar to that of a fingerprint or photographing, and it's a legitimate booking. However, there is a tendency to violate your Fourth Amendment with warrants. Now, many people say, oh, this is a due process violation. Yes, I understand that, and that word is thrown around a lot, due process violation within the child support uh, program. However, what you're more focused on is the Fourth Amendment, which is illegal search and seizure. So here's what the warrant looked like. It's called a, a capias warrant, or if I'm pronouncing it wrong, it's C-A-P-I-A-S. The difference between a capias warrant in a general warrant or a criminal warrant is just slightly. That is, you're not arrested for a crime. You're just basically being brought in because you are an alleged uh, a father. So they'll issue this warrant. Uh, you can be put in jail for it. Just understand it. So it is just as critical uh, for these warrants. Now, there's a lawsuit about this. For example, in Minnesota, Dakota County specifically, uh, the ACL sued Dakota County because they were taking the DNA samples of men before the child support without charges. That is, they would just round up the men and take their DNA and determine whether or not the father. Well, that is unconstitutional because you need a warrant. So they were sued. And the appeals court in Minnesota says it is unconstitutional. Well, guess what? Minnesota decided to continue to do this anyway. They ignored it. They said, we are going to do uh, what we're going to do because we have states' rights. We discussed on this channel lawsuits against the child support. And this is number three. Number three says you can sue a police officer, a sheriff, a warden, or even the public prisons under 1983. And what is that is? Holding that the Fourth Amendment was violated without probable cause. 
Again, Maryland versus King says you need probable cause. Also, the case law Peyton versus New York and Monell versus New York City is also another case. Well, here's what happened. A gentleman by the name of Emerson, he decided to sue Minnesota. Now, remember, the appeals court has already decided that it's unconstitutional to take a DNA sample prior to an arrest. Well, they did that with Mr. Emerson, and he sued. On the screen here, I have that they eventually settled that lawsuit. In other words, Mr. Emerson won. Now, we know that the ACLU has already won this case, but they kept doing it. And my understanding is many states are continuing to take DNA collections without a warrant as well as probable cause. So Mr. Emerson won his case. Here's the best path part of it, and here's a tip. The Emerson document now becomes the template, the blueprint for suing the agency for the collection or the illegal collection of your DNA. So that's your remedy. That's one of those remedies. If you've decided to fight the child support office based on the improper DNA collections, you must file what is called a notice of claim. It is required by law. If you have questions on the notice of claim, please email us. We will educate you on it. Again, we're not a law practice or law services. We just have education on the different elements of, of the law and the courts. So this is required. So here we are now at what we call the call to action screen. And here's where we give you the remedy for your process. So if you are taken to child support, court or administrative court for the collection of DNA or sampling or you are presumed to be the father, it is our opinion that is not where you want to go. You do not want to be anywhere near child support because to determine the DNA, their only goal is who pays child support, not who the DNA is. They're not interested. They want to know the legal father of the four definition. Now, I want to ask how many people knew that there were four definitions for fathers within child support. Next, if you're called before the, the child support court for DNA, you can ask them for a warrant and probable cause. And let's say you've been in the child support system for several years, and at the time the collection of DNA, there was no warrant. You can challenge on a jurisdiction. This is a jurisdictional challenge. You could get your case thrown out. Again, if you went through this particular process. Next, you always challenge jurisdiction. The DNA process is another process for challenge jurisdiction. And as always, if it is determined that the DNA process was conducted illegally, there's a, a, a statute in, the, in law that's called fruit of the poison tree. That is, if the process of DNA was illegal, then the entire case needs to be either uh, retried or you can get the whole thing thrown out. So that's a remedy. Uh, here on this channel, our goal is to provide you with remedy. We do the research and so that you can further uh, build your knowledge in child support. We have a video called Strategies for the Pandemic. As I've said, during this pandemic, 30 million people have applied for unemployment. Many of those are women who still seek services from the state and by law and right, they can do so, which means there's a potential of more men being involved in a child support program. And the DNA collection warrant is one of those processes that may or may not be used. If you disagree with anything that we've said on this channel regarding the DNA custody process or any of our videos, please feel free to email us. We will do our best to respond. Uh, next, we ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as press the notification bell. There's a video that we're producing called Mother Did Not Put You on Child Support Part 2. Uh, we will be sending that out uh, once we've published it. And next, we humbly ask for a donation. That is for $25 for a gift to help us to continue our research. Uh, in the case of this, if you were involved in this process, we have shortened your learning curve on that. So we save you thousands of dollars because it is our opinion. If you 
only want to know about the, the DNA of the child, it is best that we think, in our opinion, is to bypass child support and go directly to judicial court. So here we are to end. We hear some videos that we recommend. And thanks for listening today. Goodbye.